How do we use a ball end mill to machine the bevel on this knife blade? Let's tackle it. Welcome to the Fusion Friday. So first thing I'm going to do, we've got our component. This is a Patreon uh, member too that sent this question in, and he did a great job here putting his knife blade in a component. I'm going to right click, duplicate, actually just kidding, copy. And then I'm going to right click on here on the top of my file name. And I'm going to paste new. What's the difference between paste and paste new? Paste alone would actually paste it as a linked object so that if you made changes to one, it would happen to both. I want just a totally new isolated one. So why, click OK here. Why do I have two of these? We'll take a look. I'm going to call the second one knife blade. I'm going to call this first one stock. I'm going to hide my knife blade by toggling the light bulb off and then and God bless fusion this is one of the things I love about it activate my stock component click here hold down control click here hit the delete key boom same thing over here I freaking love this so why because that's probably what you're gonna start with whether you machine this out or have it water jet or plasma or stamped or whatever now I'm kinda of done with the stock for now let's go back to the knife blade Save our file, cannot save too much. Cam, new setup, stock from solid. What's my solid? See your top left of your screen where my mouse is? Expand, expand your stock, expand the bodies. Notice I didn't have to turn it on, I just need to click that body. What I like about this is it's going to give us a more accurate simulation uh, representation of what we're actually doing, which is machining from this shape. Set up for now. Uh, we'll put it, uh, maybe we'll put it uh, selected point. So change your origin from stock box point to selected point. Maybe I would pick this point right here. So what am I going to do? Let's try a scallop. Scallop tends to be, I'm still learning, and I, you know, I'll give a shout out here to Rob Lockwood, and I'll try to put a card in at the top right of a 3D toolpath video he did. Scallop is one of those like perfect blend of everything toolpaths. Let's pick a tool. Um, the customer had said a quarter or one eighth inch ball end mill. Uh, depending on your size here, the bigger the ball end mill, the easier it's going to be to get a finer finish with fewer step overs because it's a bigger thing to cut with. Uh, let's just start with a quarter inch. Maybe we'll go higher if it'll work. So my whole philosophy with 3D toolpaths, just click OK. 3D toolpaths, uh, card here to the video we did on this, they rely on the solid model, which is great. So that you kind of start big, and then you use selections and other criteria to narrow the toolpath down, versus say a 2D toolpath where it starts with nothing, and as you click things, it starts adding things to it. So here we want to subtract from it. Obviously, I don't want this area over here. The good news is this shape should be pretty easy to, to dial it in. Under geometry, selection, and I'll hover over here. Okay, so see how I got that line? I'm going to click on that line once and let up. See how we're in this current status. Now I'm not going to do anything other than move my mouse over and let it hover over that line. Click once. Now one last thing you have to do that's really important. I've got to click this little green plus to accept the current contour. Click OK. Click OK. I have now used that selection to restrain my toolpath to what? Well, it's to the center. Uh, the tool can go to the center of that chain. In this case, that's probably OK. Uh, let's just do a quick simulation before we invest too much more time in what we've got here. Click play. Cool, looks good. Not really touching up there. Okay, so obviously a lot left to do, but that's, I think we're on the right track. Passes. Step over, let's drop that down to say 0.04. A lot of times I don't go bananas with this yet because I'm more focused on getting the right toolpath uh, before I say nail in that final, you know, if we go even finer for a step over. It just reduces the uh, 
Uh, all it does is add to so the calc time, and right now I want to do quick calculations as I play with things. So one of the things I don't love is I don't have a bottoms up strategy. So when we were cutting up here, we'd be cutting with the ball of the tool mill, uh, the very tip, which has no surface footage. It's really not great. Here we go, up down. This is what I want. I want up milling. So it should do a lot more linking moves, but it's going to generally, I think, if we take a look, keep us from cutting with the very center of that tool, which doesn't tend to create a good service finishes and it doesn't uh, tend to let your tools last very long. Well, that's not true. Just did what I didn't want it to. Oh no, here we, here we go. Well, no, I don't want it to. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to pause it and see if I can work on this. I'll be right back. I also want to check contact point boundary. You can read that pop up, but this, uh, I can't move my mouse to show you, but the bottom two graphics that say disabled and enabled from a side view, basically what this does, it avoids cutting air. Basically, as soon as it sees that part of the end mill has gotten that material, it says I don't need to cut more. So that'll help clean up uh, efficiency and get rid of excess tool paths, hopefully like the one at the top here. Now it does some pretty funky stuff here. I don't have any reason to want it to come down below there. So let's edit our heights. Bottom height selection right there. Click OK. OK, now we're looking a little better. I still wish it wasn't, uh, wish it was up milling. Normally fusion is really good. Like see here we're cutting with the ball end mill, the very ball of it. I don't like that. One idea is we're not letting it extend past the center line of that and we might want to. So let's change our geometry to tool outside boundary. Let's just see what we get. Baby steps. Okay. Not sure that's better. Still cutting across the middle there. Let's try this boundary with additional offset point three or four, something bigger than the tool, just to see if that changes it. Nope. Don't like that. We may have to switch strategies, but I want to just emphasize, guys, when you got to learn, play around one option at a time, evaluate what it does. I could have sworn I wanted up milling. Let's just try down milling. Yeah, it didn't do anything. Interesting that that contact point boundary doesn't seem to be uh, working like I thought it would either. It shouldn't be creating a toolpath there. Can someone tell me why it is? Hmm, oh, here, outside in and up milling. Is that, could that be it? I don't think so. Yeah, because it thinks the uh, it thinks that's outside. That's the part of the problem. I think this actually does look a little bit better, even though it's somewhat unintentional. Yeah, I know it's still running back there. Can you guys folks comment in the video description? I'll even see if I can get Rob Lockwood or uh, Ken Spalding, John Grimm. So there's a bunch of guys who are so good at this stuff, uh, especially the knife handles. I'm going to go ahead and use Parallel, though. Because if you look at it, it says best suited for shallow areas and can be confined, blah, blah, blah. So shallow areas here are totally what this is. Same tool, geometry, I'll select that same area. So pick there, click it again, let up, hover over to here, click, and accept. I know that sounds like it stinks, but you really get used to it and it's not that bad. Say 0.04, click OK, baby steps. Awesome. So I like this because it is now in the, what I would consider up milling. It's going to always be cutting with the side of that tool. I want it to extend a little bit um, south of where we're starting. So can we do contact point and we'll say tool center on tool center on boundary, but we'll add an offset of say point 0.1. Shouldn't add anything up here. <laughs> Why is it still touching over here? I thought contact point got rid of that. 
Uh, clearly, I'm doing something wrong. But I still like this toolpath, so how would I fix that? Let's get rid of that. I would probably do a finer step over if I were actually machining this. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's more of what I want. And we can change this, do the same thing where we just do a, a higher, adjust the height. So height, model bottom, selection of, you know, right here. Click OK. Oh, uh, maybe that's what it is. Let me uh, add a little bit of negative. It's just, I love that. I love the iterative way of using CAD where you could just make one, or CAM, where you can just make one changes, one change, and you can see how the CAM kernel, how the engine is thinking and working. It really makes you a better machinist, especially for guys like me, or, you know, we're self-taught. Like, I'm just sitting right here alone in my shop right now, trying to figure this out, trying to play with it, and it's that fine line of having the confidence to be willing to experiment, but having the hunger and but uncertainty of knowing, I don't know what this is going to do. I don't know how to make this work. Um, you know, on some st materials, what we're doing here would be pretty easy. But hey, some stainlesses are tated handing that work hard. And you got to have the right recipe because you can't just go take little cleanup passes. Um, you know, you got to you got to kind of go for it. But I would say that that's as much of a win as I'm going to get it in this video. I hope you guys learned something. And let's, uh, let's look in the comments below on this one. Hopefully we'll have some good tips and tricks. Thanks, folks. Take care. See you next Friday.